to AC Lesson 1, Part 1. We've just looked at Part 0 and dealing with AC as a complex quantity and discovering that it has both magnitude and direction and we shall certainly get into more of that as the slides go on. So this is 15.1, an introduction to AC in particular. An ordinating voltage or current is one that periodically changes its polarity. That means it changes its direction of a current flow. It flows in one direction for part of a second and then flows back in the other direction and does that backwards and forwards. So an advantage of an AC is the ability to easily change an alternating voltage from one value to another using a thing called a transformer. And again you'll learn more about transformers in AC machines. But because the polarity is changing, it means the magnetic field that's created as that polarity changes is increasing and decreasing, reversing, increasing, decreasing, reversing, increasing, decreasing, which means the magnetic field is going up and down, up and down, and crossing the conductors in the transformer. This is called mutual inductance. And because of the mutual inductance and the number of windings that are involved, we can actually increase the voltage or we can decrease the voltage because of the alternating current nature of the AC supply. This allows power to be transmitted over long distances by increasing the voltage, then used by the home by decreasing the voltage. And this AC effect um, is all comes down to uh, Nikola Tesla. Now I've got another little video for you to look at there. You can see the link on the bottom of this page. Again, I can't play it from here, so I've added it as a link beside the lessons, so you can go and play it. It only runs for about 11 minutes. It's absolutely worth watching. It gives you a little bit of the history of Nikola Tesla and how he invented or discovered AC voltage, and then how he built and invented AC generators and AC motors which are all in use exactly the same way as he designed them well over a hundred years ago now. So here's a AC generation overview and if you look at my cursor you can see we have power station here represented uh, by a coal-fired power station producing base load that base load comes along through power distribution networks till it gets to a substation. That substation then normally reduces the voltage to a lower voltage which then is distributed along poles or underground cables. It comes through a fuse box either at the street or on the side of your house and is distributed as lights and power points throughout your home. Now this picture is just a very, very general overview. I've got a slightly better one on the next slide, so let's have a look at the next slide. So here's the Australian power network, is what we would call a single line diagram. And you can see at the top of the page here we have gas-fired power stations, we have coal-fired base load, and we have hydro power stations. They all generate at somewhere about 15,000 volts on their generators and they have these little interlocking circles that you can see. These are a single line diagram for a transformer. So a transformer takes a 15,000 up to 330 kV and that's what we call high voltage transmission. So that's for transmitting over hundreds and hundreds and maybe even uh, well over a thousand kilometers from where the power is generated. We then come into big substations. You can see here normally very large substation yards with big aluminium conductors and switches and circuit breakers and transformers and that voltage is then reduced down to what we call HV or high voltage distribution at 132 kV. But at this point we can also have small, smart, small scale gas uh, power stations feeding in, we could have industrial generation and factory co-generation also 
feeding into the grid at this distribution level. The distribution level is normally only over hundreds of kilometres. Then as we get past distribution, we then come down to this green section where we've got general distribution. Now general distribution can be at 66, 33, 22 or 11 kV depending on which power supply or distribution company is where you are working. And then it drops down into substations and then finally pole mount substations or pad mount substations where the supply is dropped in down to 415 and 240 volts for your local consumption. We also have rural consumption and sometimes we have single wire earth return or what's called SWA systems used out there particularly on farms and long distances that may be 60, 70, 80 odd kilometers from their substation. Then on the right hand side here we have other generations that happen at these lower voltages. There are some private generation plants. We have industrial users on the grid of course and then we have solar farm generation that can be could be domestic solar or it can be large scale and then of course becoming more popular in Australia we have wind generation here at the bottom. So that gives you a good idea of power generation and the distribution network here in Australia.